watching on TV, we'd like to invite you to come to Antioch Sunday morning at 1030 between Vinton and Edgerly on Highway 90. We'd appreciate if you'd come visit with us. This morning we're going to begin in Romans 12, 2. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Father in heaven, anoint this word today and bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody be seated. You know something, y'all? The Bible warns us repeatedly and over and over. Don't let this world shape your way of thinking. And boy, I'm going to tell you something. Nowadays, I feel so sorry for the young people because everywhere they look, they're being brainwashed. They go to school and they tell them we're coming from monkeys. They just, everywhere you look at people, people have the morals of dogs. And this Bible is so clear that in the last days, more and more people would act like the world and less like the children of God. And this is a warning for you and I. Don't let the world conform you. When you look at the movie stars, 80% of them are just rotten, rotten evil. And they're influencing people. You look at our musicians today and the things they sing about and the adultery and the drugs. And, and you look at our athletes, they disrespect our country and our flag. And the whole world is against what God is for. And we need to open our eyes and don't let this world conform you. You know, we don't realize it, but we have a job to do. And that's to prove that God's way is the acceptable and good way. And I'm here to tell you, if you live your life for Jesus and you live right, God's going to show everybody around you that you're blessed. And you see, when you're blessed, it's easy to tell somebody, come serve my God. Look what he's done for me. And it's true, folks. And it's up to us to live for God. And if you're living like the world, God's not going to bless you. And even churches today, they're so worldly, some of them. It's just terrible. But it's signs of the times because we're being influenced by the old devil. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. You look at this next verse in Ephesians 2.2. 2. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in children of disobedience. You know what? There was a time when you and I were lost, and we lived like lost people. We lived like we were part of the world because we were part of the world. But when we found Jesus, we got born again. And his spirit changed us to where we want to be pleasing to God. We want to be more like God. And we want our world to reflect a godly kingdom. Whereas the world is just concerned about carnal, fleshly things. That's the bottom line. But you know something, folks? When you break this down, in times past, yes, we were lost. And we lived according to the prince of the power of the air. I can't help it, but every time I read that, I think about what comes across the television screen in our homes. And you know, today, so many people take their baby and set it in front of the TV, and that TV becomes a babysitter. And it's molding their little minds, it's shaping their thoughts, and their personalities are being conformed to what? To this world. And if you stop and look at commercials today, they're not advertising hamburgers and health insurance. They're advertising a way of life. You look at the ungodly morals that you always just say, throw that in there, you know? And I'm going to tell you something, folks, they're, they're brainwashing us, and they're brainwashing our kids. They're desensitizing us. You know, I remember when I was a little boy, uh, I think I was nine years old, and me and Travis and my other nephew and my brother went and seen a, the most horrible black and white movie in the world, Night of the Living Dead. We were so scared we couldn't sleep by ourselves for three months. And if you look at that old black and white silly thing now, you laugh at it all the way through. Today, the dead people are dragging their guts behind them. I mean, it has gotten so graphic and so much viv more vivid, that old black and white stuff don't even upset you anymore, you know? And it just goes to show there's a word for that. It's called being desensitized. That's why these young people can blow your brains out and they don't even bat an eye because they've been desensitized. And we're living in a bad way, and the prince of the power of the air, he's changing people's minds, not for the better, but for the worst. Even the children of disobedience, all these riots and this stuff, these disobedient, that's all, the devil's behind all of that. 
You know, the devil has hated America since Columbus found it for us. God sent him here to give us a Christian nation. And it has been so good and it has flourished and people were so devoted to God until now because God blessed and the devil has, oh, he's had his eye on his apple for many years. And we're at a point now where he's got almost the majority of the people blinded and they're making bad decisions and they're throwing our country down the dustbin of life. And you can see it everywhere you look. And, and you know something? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. You know, people are blind. People make some of the dumbest decisions today that you'd ever see them make. And, and what gets me is today you can lie to people and they swallow it hook, line, and sinker. It's almost like they want to be lied to. And the Bible said that is. They've been so blinded by Satan, they can't distinguish a shyster lying to them from somebody that loves them and wants to help them. They can't make that distinction anymore. And we see this everywhere we look, y'all. And today, there are so many churches that they're just flat-out deceivers. Oh, there's still some great churches, don't get me wrong. But I've encountered a lot of them, and they're after your money. And they're after whatever they can get. And they're sure not preaching the gospel. They're scared to. They're scared to. I seen something just recently that just turned my stomach. They had this man, and I will not call him a preacher, but he opened prayer for Congress a week ago. And at the end of his prayer, you know, you and I say in Jesus' name, he said, in the name of the indigenous God and Allah, I pray. And then he said something that was so silly. When he said a man, he said and a woman. Folks, a man has nothing to do with male and female. That is Latin for so be it, or I agree with you. And this clown is supposed to be a minister. He's at the, the uh, congressional seat here doing our prayer. A man and, well, a woman. He wanted to be politically correct. He didn't want to leave the women out. But you know what? That's sheer ignorance, and I'm seeing more and more of it today. Tell you, when it comes to God, you better make sure you got your act together and you know what you believe. Don't follow some shyster preacher because, uh, uh, like I said, a lot of them couldn't care less about your soul. But you know something? As you look at this, James 4, 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses. Why does he say that? Because we're the bride of Christ. He's supposed to be our husband. But when we go out cheating on him with other with occults or careers, or whatever we put before God, sports or activities, hunting or fishing, we put anything before God, we become an adulterer or adulteress because we're putting things before our husband, God. Well, listen to this. Know ye not that friendship with the world is the enemy with God? Whosoever therefore would be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You know, when you stop and you look, I know that's why we had a president. They just fired him. They hated his guts. And the reason was he wouldn't make friends with the world. He stood for something, and he stood for you and I. And the man said Jesus Christ all the time. And it really made the devil hate him, and all the devil's followers hate this man. And this, what's this is saying right here? You take somebody that's wicked and ungodly, the world loves them. They love them. And it's just what they're showing. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a problem with some of the commercials on TV and the, the subliminal messages, then you're a friend of the world. If your biggest hero is somebody singing about laying here with Linda on my mind while my wife is sleeping, well, there's something wrong with that, folks, because that's not how God intended us to be. But yet, Americans are falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. Separate yourself from this world. Don't be like the world. You know, everybody says, well, everybody does it. And the Bible said the majority of the people are going to fall off in the cliffs of hell into a burning abyss. And you sure don't want to go there. Listen to this, what this warns us from Jesus in 2 Corinthians 3.13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. You know, I have heard all of my life, any religion is a good religion. The devil smiles real big every time a fool says that. Because this plainly tells us there are false prophets all over this world and they're twisting that Bible in knots and they're deceiving people and they're leading them away from the truth. You get off in some occult, 
to where you think you learn in the Bible, and what they're doing is taking you further and further and further away from God. I just talked to a fellow coming to my house last week for counseling. He had a wonderful marriage and a wonderful job, and everything was just wonderful. And they found this little cult they started going to, and uh, it was just terrible to hear the things they were doing there. But he come over the other day, and, well, his marriage is falling apart, and he told me God took his blessings away from him. And he's drinking beer and smoking dope again and completely slid back. And you know what, folks? It's so important that you have a real man of God and a real church family. And it's like I said last week, people go to other churches. I know I left my church to be a pastor here. Sometimes God moves you around, and that's the truth. But just be careful what you believe in this world. When you turn your TV on and you're watching TV preachers, be careful what you listen to because their job is to deceive. For many false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And look what it says. And don't marvel, don't be amazed, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, a lot of times people, they say they, they die and they go to hell, and I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say they're lying, but they, somehow they wake up on the operating table and they come back. Every one of them that says that said that the devil is the most beautiful thing they've ever seen when they got there, they all say that, sitting on that throne and, and all that, because he can be an angel of light, and he can be a deceiver. Oh, he can act like he's the holiest thing in the world, but inside, he's trying to get your soul into a place called hell. We've got to be so careful, y'all. And therefore, it's no great thing that his ministers also be transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. It's no big amazing thing that today we have churches and ministers that are as phony as the day is long. And most good preachers out there will tell you that. Beware of that. Of course, I mean, all of you in here, you know, you've been brought up in the Bible and you've learned the Bible enough. I don't believe you could be affected by that because you know better. You know the word of God too good. But folks, there's a lot of people that don't. There's a lot of people that don't. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come, shall not come, except there be a falling away first, that the man of sin might be revealed, the son of perdition. Folks, Jesus said it ain't going to get bad until people start falling away. And I'm here to tell you today to tell you the falling away has begun. You go right around and look at the parking lots of churches. Churches that used to not have a place to park now have got five cars sitting out there. And it's because people are falling away. People are not bringing their children to church anymore. Uh, they're just not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, and they're losing contact with, with the God. And we're getting further and further. And we're living in this time right now. And again, what's the purpose of that? Again, Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall arise. And what are they going to do? They shall deceive many. Oh, y'all, there's so many people in this world right now that believe some of the craziest things. And, I mean, it's just made up out of thin air. It's not biblical at all. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is, is a deceiver and an antichrist. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you flat out. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that become a man, and died on the cross and rose from the dead, then you are an antichrist. We've got Jehovah's Witnesses that go door to door and knock on people's doors and they'll cross the land and the sea to make one proselyte. And you know what when they do? That's another person going to hell. Because I don't care how good you are, how your morals are, you cannot go to heaven unless you believe Jesus died, rose, and you confess it with your mouth. It's not being a Baptist or a Catholic or a Pentecostal. Have you confessed with your mouth, Jesus, I believe you died and I believe you rose. Save my soul and wash my sins away. When you do that, your religion has, it's irrelevant. You have a personal relationship with Jesus. You don't even have to come to church to be saved. Of course, if you are saved, you're going to be hungry for what we're doing right now. And you're going to come back to hear some more of what we're talking about right now. Because you got a soul now that you've been born again. And it's hungry for the word of God. It wants to learn more about the word of God. Well, listen, little children, this 1 John 2, 18. 
In the last times, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come, and even now are there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last, last time. You know, folks, when you look around, you know, 80 years ago, they didn't put up with that stuff. People didn't put up with false prophets and, and false teachers and preachers. But nowadays, nobody will speak up about anything. And today, they're running rampant. There are so many occults that are popping up everywhere. There's so much false religion popping up everywhere. And this is a sign to let you know we're living in the last days. And you better be right with God. Man, we need to be right with God. Who Listen to this in 1 John 2.22. Who is a liar, but he, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Who is telling lies? Any religion that doesn't tell you that Jesus rose from the dead because he's God. That is the foundation of everything we believe. Jesus Christ is God himself. Now listen. Whoso denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. And that's the bottom line. Now this rest of this is in italics, as you see on your paper. And the reason for that is because the way this was written in Greek, that's what it means. It means all of that. But it didn't have the words to put on there. Sometimes in Greek it's so explicit that the translation has a little bit more than the words on the page. And that's why they've added that. Because it means if you got the Son, you got the Father. And if you ain't got the Son, you ain't got the Father. It's just that simple. You know, we talked a while ago about crossing the sea to make a proselyte. And there are people that will do that. They'll, they'll crawl on broken glass to get somebody else to get in their occult with them. And that's why Jesus said this to the scribes, the Pharisees. Woe unto you in Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you. That means pity, pity for you. You scribes and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you can pass the sea of the land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him a twofold more child of hell than yourselves. And that's true, folks. We have to be careful because they're out there trying to deceive and draw you in, and their job is to get you into hell. Why? Because they're workers of Satan. They're not ministers of God. They're demons that have been transformed into angels of light. You know, that's the bad thing about People, they bring their children up and they don't bring them to church. And then when they get older, they know nothing about the Bible. Well, they're easy prey for those that knock on the door. And I'll tell you something, folks. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Because again, again, this Bible tells us that there's going to be a lot of people fall for this, uh, for this stuff. Whoa, and you used to, I'm going to read again. Scribes and Pharisees, for you can pass the sea and the land to make one convert. When he's made, you make him twofold more a child of hell in yourselves. In 2 Timothy 4, 3, says, For the time will come, and it's here today, y'all, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears. You know what? The time is here now. Churches don't want to hear the truth anymore. If you get up and preach like the Bible tells you, you'll lose most of your congregation because they don't like being told what to do. They don't like their toes being stepped on. You know what? Sometimes we get the impression that churches are to be fun. And there's nothing wrong with having fun at church. This is the most serious thing you'll do to start your week. To come in here and praise God with song for what he's already done for you. And to open up this Bible and you and I learn this Bible and study the word and get sharp as a sword. This is what church is for. And folks, today that has changed so much because people don't want to hear it. They heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. People want to be soothed. I know there's one particular preacher I think of on television. He flies to his church in a helicopter and lands on the roof. And there's probably a million people in his congregation. And he's always smiling from ear to ear and telling them how wonderful they are. And y'all are all just wonderful. God loves you and I do too. And Folks, that's not what we're here for. Go let your grandma tell you how pretty you are and how much she loves you. That'll work. It don't fit here. Preacher's supposed to tell you, you better get your act together. Amen. Just like I need to get my act together. This is a serious thing here, folks. We're living in the last days. But you know what? As we proceed forth, listen. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned 
unto fables. You know, today, they not only change what the churches believe, they're changing the Bible. There's 5,000 copies of the Bible. Well, if you don't like to hear about hell, well, they'll just take that out. No problem. Uh, you don't like hell, you don't like to hear about well, half the churches today will not preach about hell. Most of them don't even believe it exists. But I guess Jesus was lying when he talked about hell because he sure believed in it. And you and I both know Jesus don't lie. But you know what? This is where we are right now. We've been turned into fables. Churches are not feeding their people no more. And in Romans 1.30, this is what we're full of in America. Backbiters. Congress is full of them. Haters of God. Oh, folks, I don't think you realize how much people in America today, many of them, hate God. They loathe God. Despiteful. Proud, boy, you can see that everywhere you look, man. It's just terrible. Boasters, boy, people are proud. they bragger. Inventors of evil things. Look at the Internet and all the little children they lure in and disobedient to parents. This is describing America to the T. And right now we are just wide open and we're ready for that Antichrist to start making miracles. You see, that's what he's going to do. These people that are unstable in the Bible, he's going to show them a few miracles and he's going to have them hook, line, and sinker. Never mind what the Bible said. I've seen a miracle. I had a man told me that one time. Oh, uh, forget about what that Bible says. I know all that, but I, I know what I've seen. Well, when you take your own opinion, you put it over the word of God, you're on dangerous ground right there, folks. I'm going to tell you that now. Because the devil is so powerful. Don't think you can figure him out. Don't think you can play a game with him and overcome him. Because this Bible is clear in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You know what? God is going to allow the devil to come to this earth and just have all kinds of magical powers. And you want me to tell you why? Because that's what the people want. Today in America, people would rather be lied to than to look at the truth. And you see that everywhere you go. And listen, and with all deceivableness of the unrighteous and them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You hear that, folks? If you don't love the truth, if you're not looking for the truth, the devil will bring you a lie on a silver platter. And you know what else? Strangely enough, God will let him do it. You got to understand something about God. He's, he's spectacular at giving people what they want. You know, the devil went to God one time in heaven and said, I want to be the king and I want to be God for now on. And God said, I'll give you what you want. You're going to be God, but it'll be a place called hell. That'll be your kingdom. You see, God gives you what you want. And it's just like in America today, we've chosen wicked, wicked people to run our country. I was just watching on the news just a moment ago. Uh, our new cabinet, a woman has been picked for a very high position, and her hero is young Sung Mao, Tung Mao. This man killed over 40 million of his own people, murdered them. He was a communist. And we got somebody in our Congress now that just loves him to pieces. We need to open our eyes, folks. Americans are blind. But you know what? For this cause, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You want to believe a lie, God will give you what you want. He'll send people to lie to you, toenail and tooth, if that's what you're looking for. Now, on the other hand, if you want to know the truth, Jesus will show you the truth. But if you reject it, you'll get what you, what you want. Listen, that they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know why people are rejecting God today? Because he conflicts with their lifestyle. You look at all these big gay movements. A lot of them, they hate God. Because God does not like the gay lifestyle. I'm sorry, folks. I don't hate nobody. And I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just telling you, God meant men to be with women and be fruitful and multiply. And we ignore that today. And it's gotten where it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's so much ungodliness going on in the world. And people don't want God. He gets in their way. And I say this all the time. If your lifestyle conflicts with God, you need to change your lifestyle. Because you're not going to ever change God. And one day, you're going to stand in front of him. Well, 
this, there, this breaks my heart when I read it because so many people going to church. There's so many people think they're doing right. There's so many people reading these new Bibles they just made a couple weeks ago. But listen what this says. Many will say to me in Matthew 7, 22, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name we've cast out devils. In thy name we've done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, folks, what a day that's going to be. When people say, but I was in church every day, every day, and I gave money, all of my money. And God's going to say, have you ever accepted my son as Lord and Savior to wash your sins away? No, but I never killed anybody. Folks, that's going to be a terrible day because the Lord's going to look at him and say, I'm sorry. I don't know you. I lost you in the Garden of Eden. I provided a way through my son to come back, but you never were interested in that, and you never accepted my boy Jesus. That's going to be a terrible, terrible time. But you know the, the solution for that? Is just what you're doing right now. Study, 2 Timothy 2.15, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know something, folks? You ought to know that Bible inside out. I've seen so many deacons that go to church for 30 years, and somebody say, well, Brother Bob, why do I have to get saved? Well, the uh, preacher said you did. Well, that's not a good answer. You ought to know that we ate the fruit in the garden in Eden and we lost our soul to the devil. But Jesus died on the cross to buy us back. And if you believe that and you call on him, it ain't nothing you have to do. You're never going to be an unsinner. You are a sinner. And you're not going to be a non-sinner until you get to heaven. God don't ask you to quit sinning. He knows you can't. The word repent means change your mind. Change your mind. You've been living for yourself all these years. Won't you Start living for God now and preparing to meet him because he's coming back soon, folks. I'll tell you that now. In Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, Jesus said, I know when I was there I could correct you. I could say, no, no, but I'm not there now. So you get in that Bible and study it and you work out your salvation and you do it with fear and trembling. You know, folks, that means you, the most important thing you will ever do is to make sure your relationship with Jesus is genuine. To make sure you've done it the way the Bible said to do it. Well, I believe any way. Well, Cain and Abel went up there and Cain also believed that. He brought some fruit to God instead of a lamb with blood in it. And God said, I don't want them apples and oranges and bananas. Get that out of here. It matters how you serve God because you've got to do it the way he tells you to or he don't accept it. And, folks, that is so, so serious. Today we live in a time we send our children to school and they're devoted to teach them about different origins of life. Oh, you wasn't created by no God. We evolved from a monkey, and that's where you got today. I went to a doctor sometime back with something and told the doctor I'd been praying about it, and he said, oh, you're wasting your time there. Prayer don't do nothing. What you need is medication. There's so much more of that in this old world today. You see more and more and more of it. But I'm going to tell you right now, they changed the truth about God a few years back in our generation and started on this evolution baloney. And, you know, Sometime back there was a great convention and one of the great evolutionists got up and there were scientists and biologists from all over earth in Germany. And he said, I have one question and I want someone to come stand in this lectern and give us the answer. Give me one fact, one fact out of all you thousands of people that evolution is real. One fact. And it was a dead silence and not a soul stepped up there. And I'll tell you why, folks. There's not one fact. It's a fabrication of a madman. If you study up on it, you'll find out Charles Darwin was as nutty as a run-over possum. The man, they to this day have books on his mental problems in, in his doctor's libraries that they can study his uh, psychopathy, and he, he was a schizophrenic. This man was messed up. 
He, could, he loved to fish, but he couldn't stick a worm on a hook because he felt like it was his grandfather. That's nutty. He had to hire a little boy to go fishing with him so he could put Papa on a hook for him. And, you know. But I'm telling you, folks, there's nothing to prove evolution. But yet in our schools, Romans 125, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. And folks, that's where we are to this very day. That's where we are. And you know why? Because the devil knows if you ever find out the truth, you'll not only get saved, but you'll have a better life and most of all, a better relationship with Jesus. You know, when you know the truth, even though a love of them have passed away, and you know you're going to see them again one day. When you know the truth, you might be dying with cancer right now, but you know something? You know you're going to live once your eyes close in death. You're going to wake up on streets made of gold. No matter what you and I go through, poor old Joe there, she's blind as a bat, but she knows when she gets on them streets of gold, She's going to have eyes like a chicken hawk. And what does that do? It gives you something to hang on to and look forward to. You know, folks, that's the whole thing. The truth will give you hope. And the devil don't want you to know the truth. The devil wants you to think that God's the meanest thing in the universe. And, folks, if you only knew how much God loves you, you can't even comprehend it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free in John 8, 32. You know what? That's just some ways that we get away from God. But I'm going to tell you a way, I'm going to tell you a way that the devil does more damage to people than a little bit. He deceives you by confusing you. I went to people and said, why don't you give your life to you? Oh, I, I, I can't, man. I, I just can't be like all y'all and be perfect. Uh, I can't quit sinning. This Bible don't say you got to quit sinning and get saved. Oh, I, I can't go through all the religious ceremonies and be all holy roly like y'all. I, I, I just can't do it. I, folks, we ain't no different from anybody else. We just found the Lord and we love him more than anything in the world. We know that he'll open up heaven and pour his blessings out on you as long as you're walking by his side. Now, as we read, you get away from God, he'll pull you blessings. Well, how many of you, your son comes home with all you's on a report card. You still going to buy him that bicycle? If he come home with a banner roll, well, you might think about that. He might even, ding, 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 put a bell on it. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. God is not used and he is not mocked. And the, what you're doing right now, you're coming in this church and we're studying this Bible. And you're, you're fa I'm looking at your faces and you're all just absorbing it like sponges. This is the best thing you can do to start your week right here. Well, as we go on, like I said, complicating the gospel, 2 Corinthians 3, 11, 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled and tricked Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted through the simplicity that is in Christ. Folks, it's simple. It's not no rituals. It's not no ceremonies. It don't cost you no money. It's a personal relationship between you and Jesus. It's that simple. Call upon his name and ask him to save you and to wash your sins away and tell him you believe he died and rose. And you want me to tell you something really far out? You don't have to do it in this church. You can lay down in your bed tonight and fold your hands and say, Jesus, it's just me and you. But I believe you become a man and died on the cross for me. And I know you rose from the dead because you're God. Wash my sins away and save me. And at that point, his Holy Spirit will come into you to live and it will never leave you. And you'll see a change in you like you've never seen. Oh, are you going to be perfect? No, you're not going to be perfect. Neither am I or anybody else. And there might be a time down the road when you, your burning fire for God may smolder down to just embers but before that fire will go out God will jerk your chain and get you right and get you back where you belong because he's not going to let you get too far away folks and I thank God for that he's had to jerk my chain many a time but listen here is a warning from God 
In Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. That's, that is scary, because it's telling you that there's only a few going to find the right way. you got to search and look and pray. And the devil is out there with a broad way that leads to destruction. And if he can get you to veer off the right path into that broad way, he's got you going down the road of despair. Now, maybe you're already saved. He can't change that. But he can sure take your blessings and he can sure change your life for the worst. I believe everybody in here can testify to that. We've all been there. But you know what? Today, we're too gullible, man. We're just, we're just too gullible. But again, you know, in 1 John Four one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Well, how do you try the spirits? You make sure what they preach and matches this Bible. This Bible is so easy to twist and change. I was watching a thing just the other day about this guy that's trying to convince the world that the Goliath and all them's parents were angels. Please don't believe that hogwash because that is the biggest lie they ever made up. But this guy got off into that and the way he twisted the Bible, I literally had to turn it because it was upsetting me. It started out sons of God. We are sons of God. Never ever in the Bible are angels called sons of God. Not once. Second of all, Jesus said angels don't get married. But people today say that fallen angels came down and bred with humans and made giants, and they were called sons of God. My Bible calls them demons. If you're a fallen angel, you're not a son of God. You're a demon. But I watched this preacher do that in just a few minutes. He done switched over, and every time he would find the word angel, you see right here, right here, whoa, you went from son of God to angels, and now you're in another part of the Bible talking about angels. He just twisted that Bible like you tie a rope in a knot. And folks, we've got to beware of that. I know churches that they tell you to do stuff this Bible flat out says don't do. I mean, I, sometimes I don't understand it. You know, the Bible flat tells you you don't call no man your father upon the earth, talking spiritually. But yet we call spiritual leaders father. We just ignore that. You cannot ignore the Bible. This is the word of God. We live on it. The Bible said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This word is Jesus. And when you start twisting scriptures to make it a little juicier, a little better, or something you don't like, you change it, you don't realize what you're doing. You're making the word of God into a lie. That's serious, folks. But anyway, as we go on, Proverbs 13, 14, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Folks, you get in your Bible, you learn it like you're supposed to learn it, you believe what you read, and you make sure it's accurate what you're reading, and you know what? It'll deliver you from the snares of life. You want to keep your life going good? You want to stay out of trouble? You want to stay strong in Jesus? You stay strong in the Bible. But today, we got people that are so much smarter than us. We've got all these elites today and these college-educated people that are busy telling us there's no God and aliens dropped us off. And Well, let me tell you something. Romans 1.22 explains them. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And today we got a bunch of fools that are trying to tell us how it is. Here it is, Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone, for they be the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into the ditch. And I'm sorry to say, but today <coughs> there are so many leaders that are blind. You know what? In Psalms 120, verse 2, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips, and from a deceitful tongue. You know, if it wasn't that big of a problem, why would the Lord give us a prayer to pray against it? See, the Lord knew that these lying lips and deceitful tongues were going to be all in the world, all over the world. So Jesus says, here's a prayer for you. Lord, deliver me from them lying lips and the deceiving tongues. We're to pray that all the time. 
Even when you come in here and listen to me preach, you ought to pray that prayer. Lord, don't let Brother Russell mislead us. And if he's wrong, let him see he's wrong. Because you know some folks, I'm going to tell you how I am. You show me in this Bible where I'm wrong, and you better believe I'm going to pay attention. Because I don't want to do nothing that is contrary to the truth. Here's America, Deuteronomy 8, 20. And as nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. You know, I'm just going to go right on to Psalms 9, 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. You know, folks, I'm going to tell you something. We're trying our best to forget God in this country. In 1798, a man named John Adams, y'all ever heard of him? He said this, well, let me read it to you, in fact. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. Wow, that don't sound like separation of church and state from our forefathers. It is wholly inadequate to a government of any other. The only way our Constitution can work is if we got Christians implementing it. That if we got Christians following it. It's just like George Bush said one time the Constitution ain't nothing but a piece of paper. If we don't do what it says and follow it, it's absolutely meaningless. And today, I see a lot of people that they're ignoring our Constitution, telling us that God has no part in this great Christian nation, but our forefathers who framed the Constitution said it won't work if you get away from God, folks. And we're seeing that today. Well, I'm fixing to close. I've got a few more verses here. First Thessalonians 5, 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as the thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them like a woman in travail of child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, you're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let me tell you what that means. Watching, being sober, and not sleeping. Well, first of all, it means working for Jesus. Bringing people to church. Studying your Bible. Having a prayer life. Support your church. There's so much work for you and I to do to pray for each other. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. But today, we've gotten away from God. And it's time for us to come back, folks. It's time for us to take very seriously about walking with God, our church family, praying for one another, lifting up on... Right now, folks, we need, we need each other more than ever. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of these places in the world... They don't care about you. I see doctors every day that don't care about their patients. They just want another big paycheck. And it's sad. Because the first thing Jesus tells you and I, you love each other. You love each other enough to make a difference. Are we doing that here? Well, we sure are to be. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your holy word today and for the goodness that it brings. Thank you, Lord, that we have the truth in these folds of these pages. Father, if there's one here that's never been saved, I pray they come right now and talk to me in an invitation that I can show them how to be saved. I thank you for the folks that are here today that have came and to work with us and study and learn. And Father, I pray your blessing upon everybody here and upon Christians around the world and upon the preachers that are in the pulpit this morning preaching their hearts out to try to make a difference like you told them to do. Bless us now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please stand. Page 435.